Bowl 87 is brought to you by Hardy. We're out to win you over. By USA West, the sports drink with less sodium and more potassium. It's hard-working refreshment. By United Airlines, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste, this Bud's for you. The head coach is here in Pittsburgh for the championship game. On the left is Joe Herring, a Pittsburgh native who's gotten the gladiators for the championship game. And on the right, Denver's Tim Markham. Marco Morales, a former San Diego State Aztec kicker, will be booting it away for the Denver Dynamite. Pittsburgh winning the toss and electing to receive. And back deep for the gladiators, Gal McLennan and Ricky Mitchell. Here's the kickoff rule. Any kick off the net is a live ball and may be recovered. So if Denver could put one off the net, they could cover it in the end zone for touchdown. There are the deep men. Number 31, John McClennan. Used to return kicks for Johnny Majors at Tennessee. And number eight, Ricky Mitchell. And here we go with the championship game from Pittsburgh. And it's returned by Mitchell. Up to the 10. And that's where the Gladiators will start their first drive of the game. Here's a look at the Pittsburgh Gladiators starters, and keep in mind, it is two platoon football in Arena Ball. All eyes will be on number 23, Russell Hairston, the Arena Ball MVP. If he's covered, expect the ball to end up in the hands of wingback number 30, Mike Stoops, back in the lineup after a foot injury. Mike Hornsey, the starter in game one, suffered a knee injury in game two, has not played since. Those his numbers in just a game and one quarter. First and 10 for the Gladiators. At the 10, and Hohenson ready to go upstairs. And he's got his man, John McClennan, over the 20 and down to the Denver 17. A big class play from Mike Hohenson to start the ball game. A look at the Denver defense that will try to pressure Hohenson and guard Russell Harrison tightly today. Here are the two-way starters for the Dynamite. They need pressure up front from Smith, Kane, and Harris. And the defensive specialist is number 20, Kelly Kirschbaum, a second-team all, uh, second all-league player, although he played just four games. It's first down for the Pittsburgh Gladiators. And Hohenstein to throw, and it's going to be intercepted by Denver. Steve Trimble picks it off and gets it up to the 16-yard line. Trimble, Lee Carso, just happened to be at the right place at the right time. It's interesting. The offensive game plan immediately started about attacking Trimble because he's had a bad knee. Now watch, number 31 will come off the ball, McClendon, and he's working on Steve Trimble. Now watch, his ball is in his hands, but it goes through it and deflects right into Steve Trimble's hands, who's alertly taking the ball up. Now watch from behind as he gets hit. It's a good thing right there that he held on that ball. McKinnon came back and hit him real good. Interesting to note that Pittsburgh did not throw to Harrison on the first two pass plays. Denver with it now. And with Taylor, complete to Gary Mullen on the far side. And he's out of bounds at the Denver 23. And immediately some pushing and shoving. We mentioned at the top, Lee, there is absolutely no love loss between these two teams. And that's exactly the way it started before. Now, what happens in a game like this with all this pressure, the emotion is really high. And now the officials can control the game right now by calling a penalty on both teams and not penalizing one of the other players. There's a penalty flag. We'll see what happens. Personal fouls. Personal fouls. Both ways. Play foul. The referee, number 20, Bill Parkinson, calls the offsetting penalties. So it will again be first down and 10 for the Denver Dynamite from its own 16-yard line. Joe Herring, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Gladiators, he's 43 years of age, born and raised here in Pittsburgh on the East End, was a linebacker at Bucknell, and his club's trying to shake a two-game losing streak. His club's also a very famous for good defense. Joe's always been a defensive coordinator and one of the best defensive coordinators in this country right now. Tim Markham, his opposite number on the Denver Dynamite bench. Denver with it, and it's going to be with Taylor to throw, and it's complete. Brewer coughs it up. Pittsburgh recovers. Let's see if they call it down. I believe that they have. Let's see if the officials give the Gladiators the football. They do. It's a fumble recovery for the Gladiators' Rock Richmond. 
So a couple of turnovers to start this championship game. Well, that'll happen a lot when there's a lot of excitement. Brewer, number 26, gets a good pass here from Whit Taylor. As he's running the football, they get him from behind. I think it's 45 Federico to hit him right there, yeah. Federico come and hit the ball, knocked it loose. Rock Richmond fumbles, uh, recovers it. Good play by Federico, not stopping when the play was completed. No score, Pittsburgh with it, first and ten. They have the ball from their own four-yard line. Owens, he cracks and throws, and it's going to be incomplete to Mike Stoops at the ten-yard line. And again, they do not look to 23, Russell Harrison. Well, we, we talked to the coaches last night at the party, and they were talking about trying to use Harrison as a decoy at the beginning of the ball game and getting more guys into the ball game. It won't be long that 23 will be running a deep post route going for a touchdown. Mike Owensy has the experience factor in his favor. He played in the USFL with the Washington Federals and also in Canada in the CFL with Toronto and Ottawa. Long down the sideline. There's Harrison. Comes back to get it. And it's a touchdown. Now from the far side, a penalty flag goes down. This one, Lee, may go against Harrison. I think you'll find offensive pass interference, and this is where the fourth official comes into play. I promise you, two weeks ago, that would have not been called. That was a great call by Ed Manning. 23 on the offense. talked about Harrison coming into the ball game right away, right? Here he comes down the side. Now, now watch. He gets his hands out and pushes the defender away from him. Right now, Skipper is out of the play. But Manning, Ed Manning, the official, is beyond it and can see it perfectly. That's why the fourth official is so important. It's a loss of down as Russell Harrison with the offensive pass interference penalty. It will be third down. And about 12 yards to go. The football back at the Pittsburgh 2. No score. 11.50 to play in the opening quarter. Amazing numbers for Russell Hairston this season. All and see from his own end zone. Plenty of room to run. 20. Midfield. And out of bounds. The longest run in arena football was by Chicago quarterback Mike Hole, 22 yards, and that will come close to breaking the record. Now watch, they get a good pass rush, and they force him up the middle. Now the thing that concerns me as a coach, that this young man's got a brace on his left knee, and I don't care how many yards he makes rushing, I tell him, get out of bounds, get out of bounds, hurry up. Oh, there's the new, there's a new turf next year, that won't happen. It's Pittsburgh now, first down and 10. From midfield, the 25-yard line, and that was a 23-yard run and a new record for Mike Owenson. He's got pressure, dumps it off, and incomplete at the midfield strike. Tried to hit his fullback that time as Owenson was under some big pressure from Denver, and that's a big key for the Dynamite. Yeah, 82 Key Smith came in on him. You'll say, why was he on him so fast? That's a sucker play used. Now watch, they let the lineman through because they want to throw a little quick screen. They let that guy come unblocked so they can throw a screen play. That's a very fine theory in a run and shoot offense. Pittsburgh has it second down and 10 from the 25 yard line. Hairston wide to the top of your screen and Owens is short with the pass to Hairston at the 20. Mike Owens, he played in the first game Connected with Harrison in the first arena football touchdown. Had four touchdown passes in his first game, but sort of a rough start today. Hohensee, one of five, with one intercepted at 23 yards. They're putting a little bit more pressure on him than, than they would like, the Pittsburgh coaches would like, and I think that's because they're playing a four-man defensive line most of the time. Now they're coming out in a three-man line. Third and ten for the Gladiators. Going in motion is Jim Rafferty. With the middle of Harrison, incomplete, hit him right between the numbers two and three, and Gary Mullen was there to defend. And oh, and so you talk about putting a pass on the punt. Even Babe Ruth strikes out. I'll tell you what, that was a perfect pass, but that was our matchup in the pregame show, wasn't it? Absolutely. One against 23. Time for a kick for the Gladiators on fourth down, and a field goal try will come from the 19-yard line. This will make it a 39-yard attempt for Lee Larson. Now, he's had a dry spell, Lee. He has missed his last eight field goal attempts. Owensee is the holder. And 
it is blocked. Out of bounds. And Denver will have it in great position inside the 20. And they're going to mark the football at the 15. Big John Norris, 6'3", 260 pounds, number 65, just came in there and smashed that with his left elbow. It's a lot easier to block those long field goals. Oh, that's because the, the kicker tries to kick him too hard and doesn't get enough height in it. Now watch. On the left-hand side of your picture, you'll watch number 65, John Norris, come in and put his left arm right up there and boots it right out to the side. I said before the show that it would be the kicking game, but could be the difference between these two teams. There's a timeout on the field. Eight minutes and 53 seconds left to play in the opening period as Pittsburgh and Denver are scoreless. If you made hamburger patties the way most places make hamburger patties, you discover your thick, meaty burgers were suddenly dry, flat, and lifeless. So at Hardee's, we developed a way to make our quarter pound patties gently, to cook up thicker, full of natural juices. It's a complicated machine, but we can give you an idea of the principle we based it on. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. We've had a couple of turnovers that have accelerated the pace of this first quarter. We have 8.53 to play, but still no points. Denver and Pittsburgh scoreless. The Dynamite with it now at the Pittsburgh 15-yard line after the blocked field goal attempt by Pittsburgh's Lee Larson. With Taylor, the most prolific passer in Vanderbilt Commodore football history, his 87 arena football statistics. Taylor can scramble, buy some time, and is brought down from behind. And making the tackle, number 98, Scott Dimitrinko, who played at the State University of New York at Albany. 6'2", 227, Dimitrinko made a good play there, but the play was caused by number 85, Ernest Adams, who came in and forced with Taylor out of the pocket. Dimitrinko coming back after a foot injury. He injured that foot against Denver here a couple of weeks ago. With Taylor, breaks the Denver huddle, and the Dynamite come up second down and 11 from the 16. Taylor looks, pass deflected, and incomplete, nearly intercepted by number eight, Ricky Mitchell. Play was nearly intercepted because Greg Rawls blitz. Now, if you watch Greg Rawls number 54, he's right in the face of number 10 with Taylor. Now, watch him. He'll come right here and force him to throw the ball a little lower. It's deflected, and Mitchell almost gets an interception right there. Greg Rawls showing the style that made him a first team all arena ball player this year. Leads the team with 13 sacks. Taylor on third and 11. Under pressure. At the 25-yard line. Two big factors in Pittsburgh's favor in this game, Lee. They lead the league in sacks, and Denver has allowed the most sacks. That's why they put Rick Taylor in there, because he's a good scrambler. But that time, Dimitrinko, Walls, Adams are just too strong physically for him. That's a good-looking football player, doesn't he? Indeed. 6'2", 227, Scott Dimitrinko. He's already picked up two sacks. And now Marco Morales coming into the ball game for Denver to attempt a 41-yard field goal attempt. Denver just two for 22 in field goals this season. And this one is no good. Can be returned off the net. Covered in the end zone by Pittsburgh, and that's a touchback. So again, Lee, the kicking woes of Denver continue. There's a top out of the field. We have 655 left to play in the first quarter. Denver Pittsburgh Stormers. Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now, and three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Probably the contact that the field, you know, allows you to have, uh, I mean, no matter, no one can hide on the field, so you're able to hit 
you know, from any position, you can get to the play probably uh, from anywhere. The words of Scott DiMatrico, two sacks in the first quarter of this game. He's been a factor because he's so strong and quick, and he's beaten Pat Kane, number 50, his counterpart by using some stunts. They're using a little, uh, what you call twist. In other words, one lineman will go in one way and another guy will twist around the other way. Much, it's used very, very successfully by the Pittsburgh Steelers right across the street here. No score in the opening period of Arena Bowl 87. And a loose football in the end zone. Denver's going to recover it, and they do for the touchdown. Owensee never found the handle, and the Denver Dynamite pounce up in the end zone for the first score in this championship game. is credited with the fumble recovery. He has played just the last two weeks, 23 years old, and played his college football at Kansas and is credited with the first score of this game. There's Vortex. And now the Dynamite trying to kick the extra point. And Marco Morales is coming on to kick. Morales in extra points this year is 10 for 14. And he missed this one. Wide to the right on the field. Six minutes and 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Denver Dynamite six, Pittsburgh nothing. This is a hamburger. Getting hard and dry. Because it's cooking on a flame that's too high. At Hardee's, we make our quarter-pound hamburgers at a lower temperature. So they cook up thicker, succulent, full of natural juices. And the flavor doesn't go up in smoke. Hardens, we're out to win you over. The Denver Dynamite jumping out to a six to nothing first quarter lead as Phil Forte recovers a Mike Cohen to fumble in the end zone for a touchdown. We'll show you that play just as soon as the Denver club kicks off and Ricky Mitchell has returned one for 16 yards here in the opening period. Is back deep. He's joined with teammate John McLennan in the end zone. And there's Marco Morales to kick it away. Mitchell turns and watch this one sail through the upright. So that's a touchback. Now the first score of the game, Corso, comes over a turnover. Can you imagine all those high-priced players out there and all those great plays? And what happens is Hornsey he pulls out too fast, which means he did not wait to get the ball and moved out of there. And there's Forte who comes in at number 92 and scores. He's the leading scorer in the 1987 arena. <laughs> he gave it a pretty good spike after that touchdown. Forte down. He's ready to go at that defensive end spot. Oh, and see, again pulls away from center, and again Denver recovers. The Denver Dynamite have it, and is he a little gun-shy? No, I'll tell you what's happened. Oh, he hasn't played a lot, and he was been off, and there's no, there's no way you can practice in a game and practice exactly the way it's going to happen. Now watch, his hands are split. The ball is snapped there, and he, he lets his thumbs get apart, and when that does happen, the ball comes out. Now he might consider, and I'm telling you, he's going to talk to him right now, he might consider bringing Brendan Fulmar in the ball game. Because it could be right now psychologically on Hollins' mind. The third Pittsburgh turnover, two fumbles lost, one pass has been intercepted. Denver knocks on the door inside the five at the three, first and goal. Taylor hands off to the fullback, Rich Prather, and he's stacked up. So the vaunted Pittsburgh defensive line, given a boost of emotion by the fans here at the Civic Arena, trying to make their presence felt. The Denver coaches told us last night that they thought they would try to run the ball off a little bit more. Now, there's Hohensee. Psychologically, he's got to get his act together. It's his fault because his hands have been coming loose. Anytime you take the center snap, you keep your thumbs together, and you never allow them to separate. Second and goal from the two. Denver's with Taylor. A tight formation. Handoff. Prather tries to pull his way into the end zone, carries a couple of defenders, and he's in for the score. Rich Prather with the rushing touchdown. He had two rushing touchdowns during the regular season, and the man from Frostburg State puts Denver on top 12 to nothing, and that makes Tim Markham a happy man. 
Steelers got the size, Lee, and do some damage on the goal line situation. Well, it's exactly what they told us last night they were going to do. They were going to put Smith 6'5", 240 against Walls at 215 pounds and just overpower them on the goal line. They're going to go for two now. Holland is wide to the right. The opponents have gone four times and only made once against Pittsburgh for two points. Taylor gets away. Pass is reflected. Just as soon as uh, he let go of the pass, Scott Dimitrenko, number 98, batted the Wood Taylor pass now. And the two-point pass attempt there. 523 left to play. Rich Prater giving Denver a 12-0 lead. This is where Michael Jordan kept practicing his jump shot when he didn't make varsity. This is where George Brett kept fielding after his team lost the state finals. Wildcat ball. And this is where Walter Payton played every game his freshman year as a drummer in the marching band. What do these legends have in common? They've always had a will to win. And they've always had a Wilson. in 70 seconds to take a 12 to nothing lead. Denver kicking it off to Pittsburgh and Marco Morales is the kickoff man for the Dynamite. Owens has got that helmet on and the chin strap all set. There's Ricky Mitchell in the end zone and John McLennan back there with him. Here's the kick. This one is going to be off the net. Mitchell waits for it. Now he returns it. Caught in the end zone. Isn't a safety until he gets out and goes back in. He gets away at the five. Keeps going up to the 11-yard line. That ball off the nose a little differently because it did not hit the net. It hit between the uprights where the, the net is there to catch the uh, field goal that go through the uprights. And that is not a tight net. That's a soft net. And Mitchell had to wait for it. No, but the rules still pertain. Now. Absolutely. Now, we've got to keep our eye on Hohensee and Dima Trinko because psychologically, if they just get one, then they get into the smooth, the smooth part of the game and it just keeps going naturally. Hohensee hit his first pass. He's missed five in a row. Is there a tendency to try to do too much too soon in this situation? Absolutely. They bring McClendon in motion. Mike Stoops can't hang on at the 16. Trimble is there along with Kelly Kirschball for the Denver Dynamite. The difference so far in the ball game is that 82 and 92 on uh, Smith and, and Forte on Denver are beating the offensive linemen. That, that's, that Forte looks like a good football player. They just picked him up in the last couple of weeks. We have not seen him play, but that was a good good move by them, picking him up. Bill Forte was an all-Big 8 selection at Kansas. Was a defensive end starter in all 11 games last year for the Jayhawks. Owensy throwing. This one's complete up to the 22-yard line of John McLennan. for Johnny Majors at Tennessee and gives Hohensee some confidence by making this kick. Watch his concentration. As Hohensee throws the ball, which is a little low, he keeps his eye on the ball, he stretches his arms out and catches the ball perfectly and tucks it away and gets ready for the hit. Nice play by John McClendon. John has caught a couple of passes for 34 yards here in the first period. The only two completions for Hohensee. Three minutes and 45 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Denver leads 12-0, and here's Mr. Harrison making a catch, and Mr. Mullen is there to say hello. Inside the 25, down to the Denver 22. Denver has changed his strategy on, on, on Harrison automatically. They were playing him tight the first time, and he, he's got six touchdown passes. Now watch Mullen and Heron here. This is what we're talking about. You let the Harrison catch the ball in front, and you come up and strike him. Boom. And keep him in front of you. And keep punishing him and make him pay the price. Don't let him get behind you. Stoops in motion. Incomplete by Hollinsley to Stoops and Holland again defending that time. Noah's going to come back to third down and about four yards to go. The 
Pittsburgh Gladiators lost their last two regular season games, one to Denver in this building. And Lee, did that give Denver a little bit of a psychological advantage coming in, knowing they won a game here? Absolutely. They did what they have to do to win a championship. They've already beaten this team here once. Owenson, quick pass. That's complete. Mike Stoops down to the 10-yard line. Here the fans here in the arena. Stoops. He's a fan favorite. Stoops is 6'1", 185. He was an all-Big Ten defensive player for Iowa Hawkeyes, but that time he made a good post route, and Hollensee hit him with a good pass. Big crowd here at the Civic Arena to watch this championship game. Mike Hollensee, 4 for 11 for 53 yards in the opening quarter, of which two minutes remain. 12 to nothing, Denver leading. Hollensee, incomplete inside the five. Live skipper defending out John McClellan. Coverage lead for Denver. A little crisper, a little sharper tonight than we've seen it in the past. You know why? Because the four linemen are getting in the face of Hollensee, not giving him a chance. The secret to pass defense is a good pass rush. Now, he drops this one, although he was the same guy that caught it, but the pressure was on him. He took his eye off of it. You notice he did not keep his eye all the way on the ball. The number 80 skipper was about to hit him, too. That has some of That will affect you. Hollensee to pass. Complete at the two, and again it is Mike Stoops and Owens. He really took a shot that time. He had two men right on top of him. One of them was 82 Keith Smith. I tell you what, that Smith is playing some football game at 6'5, 240. He's got five sets, but he's got about 17 scares already. It is third down and 10 from the 11 yard line. In the first two games was a 60% passer. Stoops coming towards it. Owens see. Receivers go down. Penalty flags fly the two. Harrison being guarded that time by Richard Rogers. And contact was made. Richard Rogers held on to Harrison. It'll be an eight-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Holding 32 on the defense. Five-yard penalty and a first down. So that bails out the Gladiators on this drive. It was an automatic. It was a great call by the official over there. LT Bonner was right on the call. Rogers couldn't stop him. He was going for a touchdown. Some people teach that theory. If a guy's going for a touchdown, grab him and hold him. We'll try to stop him the next three or four plays. That is the fifth Pittsburgh first down of the game. Denver does not have a first down, yet the Dynamite lead it 12 to nothing. Escape the pressure. Pat Kane out of Wichita State. Chuck Harris, number 60, there to apply the pressure on Owenson. And I still get the feeling that Mike is just a little jittery back there. He's jittery because they're hitting him. Wouldn't you be jittery if a guy 6'3, 255 was all over you? I would be. I'd be upset if you were after him. I know, but the guy's eating hot garlic for dinner <laughs> and he's all over those guys. Let me tell you something. The secret and the essence of winning in this league is the pass rush. The team with the best pass rush supposed to be in this game is Pittsburgh, but Denver's beating them on the offensive line. Plus the knee for Hohenstein as the horn sounds in the first quarter. He's trying to come back after a four-week layoff after arthroscopic surgery on his right knee. Well, Pittsburgh's been black in the opening quarter. 12-0 Dynamite when we come back. I step back. You step up. You step up. You step up. But Dad, step back and consider the price of freedom. Not mine. Yours. Co-sign the loan and I'm out of your hair. George! Give Bobby your keys so he can go to the store. A step back from the cost of a new car is a step up to a dependable used car at Royal Oldsmobile. So step up. You step up. Used car. Royal Oldsmobile. There's nothing else like it. When a field of thoroughbreds take the final turn and thunder toward the finish, it's exciting, it's fun, it's Jefferson Downs. Last year, racing fans won over $50 million at Jefferson Downs. This year, we want you to win even more. Play the Daily Double, the Exacta, or the Twin Trifecta. There are lots of ways to win, and we want you to win at Jefferson Downs. For all that you do. Say, Lance, 
landscaper. Tomorrow, a college student. Yep. Finally took your advice, Mike. You taught him. Already you're smart. All you knew. They say he's a lot like you. Yeah, you make America work. And this one's for you. Here's to you. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. To a future architect. And to a brother who made it possible. This bug's for you. <sighs> Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Corso, Marching and Chatter Society is represented here at Arena Bowl 87. Three guys from Lake Mary, Florida flew all the way up here to watch the game. <laughs> Denver 12 and Pittsburgh nothing as we start the second quarter of play. Pittsburgh has it second down and 10 from the Denver 14-yard line. And Mike Owenson surveys the situation. He brings Mike Powell, 44, in motion toward him. Owens see over the middle, complete to Powell, the five-yard line, breaks a tackle, slammed into the board by Clyde Skipper at the three, and Pittsburgh has it first and goal. Mike Powell played at Weaver State. And Powell really crashing into those boards hard. Watch we'll take Powell. a listen here. Yeah, Powell number 44 catches with the net. Watch. Missed a few games. He took a shot and was had a concussion, and they held him out of play. But he's back for the championship game. 14-29 to go in the first half. A 12 to nothing Denver advantage. But Pittsburgh with its first scoring threat of the game. Coming on strong to lead this Denver defensive attack. Phil Forte, a 6'2", 238 from Kansas is the secret. Now watch him come around to the outside. He makes a good move. He beats Federico. The reason why he beats Federico is Federico is only 6'2", 205. It's a mismatch. You always see mismatches in receivers, but that's a perfect one when it comes to pass rush. Forte had seven sacks in the Big Eight last year at Kansas. He's added one tonight. Denver on four, or Pittsburgh right on fourth down to the air. Hollins to the five and out of bounds. Powell making the grab. Let's see if it's enough for first down. It appears not. It is shy of a first down. Denver holds and takes over on offense. The Pittsburgh fans are restless. The Gladiators have been blanked in the first quarter and the first minute and a half here in the second period. The Denver, uh, Denver uh, defense is not supposed to be one of their things that they do well. Look at that. They've had opponents have scored 252 points again, an average of 42 points a game on them. But Taylor, 2 4 3 in the air in this game. He's running. Long down for Gary Mullen. Incomplete and no penalty fly. Some bumping on the sideline. Number 29, the defensive specialist, Rock Richmond for the Gladiators, and Mullen coming down that near side. Mullen and Richmond were going side by side, and the reason why that wasn't a pass interference call is because Rock Richmond, the defender, looked up for the ball, and therefore he was going for it, and there's no contact rule when he's looking for the ball. Gary Mullen is from just outside Pittsburgh, Clarendon, Pennsylvania. The referee Bill Parkinson. There was a penalty flag thrown way back in the end zone. Penalty against Pittsburgh for roughing the passer. And that moves it out to the 13, where it is first and 10. Whit Taylor suffered a concussion against Pittsburgh in Denver three weeks ago. Dumps it quickly, and it is going to be complete. Number 42 is Darrell Taylor making the grab. That's going to be a gain of four yards. It becomes second down at six. 
for the Denver Dynamite. Darrell Taylor, he'll be in the alumni news of Lincoln University as he plays in this Arena Ball Championship game. Had a fine season. Second team, all league selection. An excellent tackle by Mike Stoops that time. He kept under control and popped him and didn't give him an extra yard after he caught the ball. Second and six. And penalty flag stopped the play. The movement in that line. 54 for Pittsburgh is Craig Walls. He may Coach jump prematurely. Defense, number 68, New York County. Who's going to be on 68? William Yates. If you're watching arena football for the first time, some of the rules to keep in mind, all kicks, both field goals and kickoffs that go off the net are playable. There are no punts. They kick on fourth down a field goal attempt. Man-to-man -man defense on the passing game. You must play both ways, and there is the two-point conversion option after a touchdown. Here's a quick pitch to Craven. 25, 20, and out of bounds. A quick hitting play, and Prather picks up the Denver first down. That was a nice theory because what it was was an option play. They put everybody on in, in one side of the field, and they came down. Now, with, with Taylor will come down the line of scrimmage. As he gets down, he reads the outside man. He pitches the ball to Prather. Now, watch 30 come up. That's his man. He comes up and runs him out of bounds. But the theory was you put everybody on one side, make everybody from Pittsburgh over there and run the option the opposite way. Good play by Rick. Prather will be going into the Frostburg State Hall of Fame in October. Fine running back. And the pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Willis Yates out of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Making that look. 11 minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the first half, and Denver continues to lead 12 to nothing. But remember, those 12 points were gifts. So right now, basically, in a coach's standpoint, it's, a, it's an even ball game. Taylor earlier this season had 10 touchdown passes in one game and 399 yards that against the Washington Commandos Arena Football League record and here comes the blind side sacked by Greg Wall Number 54, Walls, played at Indiana. He's, he's really quick. You notice how he made that swim move? A swim move means you look one direction and flip your arm over like you're doing an overstroke. And that was a great play by Walls. 6'2", 215 pounds from Indiana University. He's from here in Pittsburgh. Went to Peabody High School. Recruited by a guy named Lee Corso. Good young man. Third down. And 16. Taylor lost it to a wide open Gary Mullen for the touchdown. The speed of Gary Mullen coming to the four, and Denver has jumped out to an 18 to nothing lead. Two, going for two. Yeah. Yeah, get in. Wait, you want him in there? You want him in there? Jim Markham, the Denver head coach, as the dynamite. Going for the two-point conversion here is Whit Taylor. Finds Gary Mullen on the touchdown play. 18 to nothing. Denver leading with 10.22 to go in the first half. Pittsburgh's been good on, on two-point uh, defense. They've gone five times against them, but they've only made it once the entire season. So the two-point opportunity. Defense was there to jump on him and snuff out the two-point attempt just behind the line of scrimmage. Gary Mullen using his great speed here to go low right past Rock Richmond and score. Denver leads 18 to nothing. 10-22 to go in the second quarter in the Arena Bowl championship game. We'll return to the Civic Arena in just a moment. Experience the most luscious sunrise in the world. Hardy's Canadian Sunrise Biscuit. Real Canadian bacon, cheese, farm fresh egg, and hickory smoked bacon 
on Hardy's made from scratch Rise and Shine Biscuit. For a taste so special, it'll brighten your whole day. Hardy's, we're out to win you over. Ten minutes and 22 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. It is done for 18 and Pittsburgh nothing. The home team gladiators were favored in this game, Lee Corso, but Denver taking advantage of a couple of early breaks and now the touchdown pass play to Gary Mullen. That is Ricky Mitchell set to return. He can score a lot of points fast in this league. Last a couple weeks ago, Denver scored 26 points in one quarter, so Pittsburgh could come back. Morales with a kick. And it hits and is going to be ruled a touchback. It hit the crossbar at the bottom and then fell out of bounds. So it's a touchback for the Gladiators, and they'll have a first down and 10 from their own five-yard line. Pittsburgh and Denver reaching the championship game based on the final standings in arena football. Both clubs winning four and losing two. The Washington Commandos and Chicago Bruises both two and four. So since Pittsburgh and Denver tied for first, they had to base it on a tennis to see who would host the game. And Pittsburgh after Denver by average just over 800. And that's the reason our championship game is here at the Civic Arena. One of the big pluses in arena football in this previous season was the outstanding attendance at all four league cities. Owens trying to get out of his end zone, does so. Can't throw, and he is pressured and dropped down at the seven-yard line. And once again, it is not number 92, Phil Forte, there to make the play for Denver. Forte made the play, but number 65, John Norris from the American International, 63-260, was the man who forced Hornsey out of the pocket so Forte could make the play. It seems like it's a different pass rusher every time getting the, to the quarterback. There's a good picture of John Norris right there. Second down and eight yards to go for Pittsburgh. Trailing Denver, 18-0. Hohenson throws. And it's going to be a completed pass. And they bring it out to the 20-yard line. Russell Harrison moves it up to the 19-yard line. Chris Brewer is defending on the play. And it looked from up here that Harrison just scooped it off the grass, but they did rule it a completed pass. He looked like a shortstop at the University of Kentucky, didn't he? Now watch, he's picked it up with good concentration. That's a legal catch. But now, look at the theory. The theory they're playing against Russell Harrison is you can have as many as those short ones you want. We're going to come up and punish you. We're not going to let you go beat, beat us deep. First down for Pittsburgh. Goes in motion. They throw to Hairston and he's hit hard at the Denver 22. Here's the big crunch on the sideline as Hairston goes up for this catch and Clyde Skipper, number 80, to defend for Denver. was a perfect example of the theory they're using. Let Harrison catch it in front of him and then punish him. Drive him into the boards. Under eight minutes to go in the first half. Owen C is racked up back at the 15. Pat Kane credited with the sack. The strength of Pittsburgh has been its line, both offensive and defensive. They've been able to protect the quarterback, and they've been able to apply pressure, but tonight it's been Denver doing the job. Pittsburgh has sacked the quarterback 33 times this year, leading the league by a vast number. But Denver has come up with a new game plan of playing four defensive linemen, and they're physically whipping them up front. Third down, and 14 yards to go. Owensy has plenty of time. Throws it long. And it's intercepted by Steve Trimble of Denver at the five-yard line. They were trying to go to Mike Stoops deep, but Trimble stepped in front and picked off the pass. His second interception of the game. 7-19 to play in the quarter. Denver leading Pittsburgh by 18. We are gathered here today. You'd expect this Panasonic Omni Movie camcorder to shoot in daylight. If anyone believes this couple should not be married, let him speak now. You might expect this Panasonic camcorder to shoot in room light. 
Let him speak now. But what you don't expect is that it can shoot by the light of one candle. And it's VHS. Let him speak now. Camcorders that do the unexpected make Panasonic just slightly ahead of our time. Mike Cohensey suffers his second interception of the game. The Pittsburgh quarterback, Trimble, picks him off for a second time. And Denver's got it first and ten from their own five-yard line, leading 18 to nothing. And Brendan Fulmar, number seven, got off the bench, puts his helmet on. He started throwing something. I think you'll see Fulmar coming for Hohensey. Fulmar came in for Hohensey when Mike was injured in game two and really loved the Gladiators two first plays. Right now it's Rick Taylor center stage for the Denver Dynamite. 45 yards to negotiate. They bring a man in motion. That is Chris Brewer. Completed pass up to the 20, and they're going to mark it out of bounds at the 20 yard. Making the grab, number 42, Darrell Taylor, and defending Jim Rafferty out of Colgate. That time it was a good play by Darrell Taylor, but the reason it was such a good play is a perfect pass protection. There wasn't anybody four yards away or close to Whit Taylor in that time, but he could throw the ball straight to the other buddy, Darrell Taylor. Darrell Taylor, sixth in the league in receiving and eighth in scoring this year. And six touchdown passes. Denver has a first down and ten from its own 20. Nobody looking for the pass, and it was incomplete near the 10-yard line. Brewer was in the vicinity, but he had his back to the pass. Tim Markham wants to know what's going on as well. Well, see, Jim's a defensive coordinator. He's the head coach, but he's also the defensive coordinator, and he allows his offensive staff to call the plays. Second and ten. Taylor with time, throwing, and incomplete at the goal line for 26, Chris Brewer. And a penalty flag was thrown. Back behind the line of scrimmage, and holding against Denver, the preliminary call. Maybe that's why they're getting such good pass protection. They've been working all this week on holding. Been they're down. Pittsburgh will take the play, an incompleted pass to make a third down. The clock continues to move. We have five minutes and 25 seconds left to play. Here in the second quarter, Cliff Taylor is 5-4-9 and passing 72 yards and one touchdown pass. Gary Mullen, the top receiver, wide to the right side. Looking to throw Mullins' way, and he's got it at the 15, and run out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pittsburgh, it appears, Lee, is playing Mullin the same way they're playing Hairston. Well, they're playing him, they're playing him loose because they don't want him to go by him, particularly in that case, Rock Richmond, who got beat deep. Now, Mullins at the top. See, Richmond is worried about that post route, and boy, that was a nice cut by Mullin. They're reading that. By reading it means they call a basic play. As he comes off the line of scrimmage, Mullin does. If the man is playing him inside, he breaks it to the outside. If he's playing him outside, he breaks it to the inside for a touchdown. Great theory. Garrett Mullen played in four bowl games in four years for the West Virginia Mountaineers. In Arena Bowl, 87 tonight, and Taylor dumps the pass to Prather. He picks it up at the five and gets it down to the three-yard line. A quick catch and run for Rich Prather. Okay, that was the same play that they, the other team, uh, Pittsburgh, did before. Watch the screen on this one now. Prather will sneak in there and they'll let the line come past them. Now watch. All of the defensive line will be allowed to come across and number 32, Prather will slip in the middle and then the offensive lineman come down and block the middle linebacker. Great theory. The run and shoot, Miles Davis. That's his number one play. The Denver Dynamite leading at 18 to nothing. And now they've got it first down at goal from the three-yard line. Throwing incomplete. In the end zone, number 32, Richard Rogers. For Denver, unable to make the grab. But I can't tell you what a great play that was by Russell Harrison. Harrison was playing the outside. He covered a guy all the way across the field. And as Rogers was about to catch the ball, 
whack. He smashed him and knocked the ball loose. That was Russell Harrison playing defense. Harrison was a defensive back at Kentucky, and you don't learn those defensive lessons. Let me tell you something. You play defensive back at Kentucky, and you're tough. Three minutes to go in the first half. Hand off. Inside to Chris Brewer. Third down and goal. Brewer played at the Pac-10 at Arizona. First team All-League selection. He was up there in the rushing statistics. He was fourth in the league in rushing. That's the official ban of Arena Bowl, 1987. 2.20 left to play in the second period. To the end zone, it's headed for Mullen and batted down by Pittsburgh. Greg Federico got a hand on it, number 45. Now, Federico was a middle linebacker, and it's not his man, but remember, when they're down in the goal line, they don't have much depth. He zips it over there and makes a great play that they were trying to go to Mullen one-on-one -on -one against Richmond. Now, this is an important kick because it's got to get them back into that 20 number so that they can't catch him quick. Marco Morales is 0-1 for in touchdowns. This will be an 18-yard attempt. Spotted from the 10, and now Pittsburgh has taken a timeout. We'll come back with a field goal attempt by Marco Morales after this. Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now, and three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. in the half. Denver's going to attempt a field goal. An 18-yarder by Marco Morales in just a moment after the timeout. Here are the leading receivers in this preview season of Arena Football. Harrison far and away the leader. But he has been silenced tonight by this Denver defense and particularly the Denver pass rush. But look at the best balance by Denver. They got four in there against one. An 18-yard Field goal attempt for Morales. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Missed a 40 yarder earlier. This kick, no good. Hit the upright. Taylor picks it up. And they'll blow it dead as it hit the upright. The ball cannot be returned off the off the net on a field goal attempt. 134 left to play. Here in the second quarter, Denver leading it 18 to nothing in this Arena Bowl championship game. I believe, Lee, there is some confusion because they may have blown that play dead prematurely. Let's see what Bill Parkinson has to say. The ball belongs to the receivers by special rule. The track rule bounce back. It'll be first down, Pittsburgh. Did you understand that? The trap rule. That's what I thought he said. <laughs> Look at Markham down there. He's he wants to know what the trap rule is. That's what I'm doing. But let me tell you something. Oh look, he's gonna come over and explain it to Markham now. This ought to be good. <laughs> A minute 34 to play. Here in the second period, and Tim Markham says. What is this trap rule you're talking about? <laughs> we'll return to Pittsburgh in the Civic Arena right after this. Hell, there ain't nothing better than a bigger burger. Some fast food places will do anything to sell you a meal. Try our new family size fries. Anything. There's a luau in every bite. Presenting the world's smallest hamburger. Well, if you'd sooner do without all those gimmicks, you're invited to Hardee's for thick, juicy, 100% pure American beef burgers, which, quite frankly, speak for themselves. Because at Hardee's, we're out to win you over. We're back in Pittsburgh, and an unsatisfied Tim Markham just got an explanation from the officials. 
during the timeout, Timmy was able to talk to the referee, Bill Parkinson, about that last field goal attempt by Marco Morales. Here's, here's what they had to say. Green guy, listen to me a minute. It touched the green guy. We still have the chance to make the line to game. Tell him, we have the chance. Not on a second rule. Hey. Let me tell you something. I know how Tim Market feels. They did the same thing to me in overtime in the opening game. <laughs> Joe Herring looks a little nonplussed by it all. 18 to nothing, Denver, a minute 34 to play. Herring trying to figure out what he can do to spark his offense, and he's changed quarterbacks. Brendan Fulmar is now in the game for the Gladiators, and he throws it behind Russell Harrison near midfield. Quite a season. He was third in the league in passing percentage at 58 percent, but he did throw nine interceptions along with those 21 touchdown passes. At the University of California, Pennsylvania. Omar lobs it over the middle and incomplete. Mike Stoops, the intended receiver. Gladiator football team leaves out of sync. That's right. And one of the reasons they are is they made a change at quarterback, and sometimes you can second guess that. You know, you win a lot of ball games, all of a sudden you change the leadership. One minute warning time rule. Pittsburgh has one timeout. Denver has one timeout. There's plenty of time left. You can score a lot of points real quick. We have one minute remaining in the half, and as you heard Bill Parkinson announce, the one-minute timing rules were in effect, and all that means is, is the clock now will stop on incomplete passes and out of bounds, etc., as in outdoor football. 18-0 done. Bill Herring's gladiators. In trouble here, and Fulmar to pass, and it's too tall at the 20-yard line. Russell Hairston. Again, the intended receiver. Nothing is going right for the Gladiators, and Lee Larson is going to have to come into the game on fourth down and try a long, long field goal. On the long field goals, you've got to be careful because you don't get the ball up real quick as a soccer kicker, and this is where they could block it and recover it for a touchdown, and then they really be in good shape. Denver has sent a couple of men deep. Larson is 0 for 1 in this game in field goals. He missed a 39-yarder in the opening quarter. Spot is at the two, so this will be a 55 yard field goal attempt. He got it off, but it's going to be short and returned by Denver. And bringing it out is Darrell Taylor. Cuts to the outside, gets to the 15. First down at 10 for Denver. 46 seconds remaining. First half. 18 to nothing, Denver leading. And there's a timeout on the field. Denver leading it, 18 to nothing, will return in just a moment. calls a tape of seven different songs and funny recordings for answering machines. I am very sorry that I'm not able to take your call. Only 1495. Give someone the gift of gab for their answering machine. Oh, and a friend. What you've actually done is bought a one-way ticket to the answering machine zone. Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Crazy Calls, a tape of seven different songs and funny recordings for only $14.95. Wait for the beat. You gotta leave your name. You gotta leave your number. To order? Wait for the beat. Call 1-800-351-7100. Call 1-800-351-7100. Well, the first thing that surprised me was when we played Pittsburgh here two weeks ago, and I'm sitting in the bleachers, and a lady offered me some nachos and cheese. In the bleachers, and matter of fact, I took a couple of nachos and uh, enjoyed it. But uh, the crowds and the people really get into it. I love it. It's great. Great football. John Forte who played collegiately at Ole Miss, and he's right back in the stands here at Pittsburgh. Now, in outdoor football, they would go to a running game and be conservative and run out the clock. But they don't have a running game in indoor football, so they're going to have to throw the ball and maybe get a chance to intercept it. Past the moment. And the pass has been 
judged incomplete. Mullen was out of bounds. So it'll be second at it. Then now a penalty flag has been thrown back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he called holding on number 60, Chuck Harris, holding Greg Walls, number 54. 42 seconds remain in the half, and Denver on top, 18 to nothing. Referee Bill Parkinson picking up the flag and moving the football back to the 10, where it's first down and 15. The Gladiators in front of the home crowd. Lee, here's Joe Herring on the Pittsburgh bench. They're trailing 18-0. He's a fiery guy with a lot of emotion and enthusiasm, but he looks like he's got his tail tucked between his legs. Well, right now, this, this, what's happened to him is he's made a calculated, he made a mistake, basically. He started a quarterback that probably he shouldn't have started, and they've got his team out of sync, and now he's got to have to pay for it and go back in the halftime and try to grant rally his troops. First and 15, an incomplete pass. Intended for Gary Mullen up to the 18-yard line. Remember, when Denver beat Pittsburgh here, they were ahead by a big score, and Pittsburgh come back and scored 19 points in the fourth quarter. So if they did the same thing right now and set them out, they'd beat them 19-18. But the big difference tonight has been the Denver pass rush on Pittsburgh. No question. With Taylor misfired on his last three passes. He's seven for 14 in the game, 99 yards. Throws to the sideline, and it's complete. And Mullen is wrapped up over the 20-yard line. They'll mark it at the 21. Gary Mullen, a first-team all-league receiver. Speed to burn at that wideout position. As we said before, he averages 19 yards every time he catches it. But what they're doing is playing a soft man-for-man -man or giving him a cushion, which means they give him some room. And when he catches it, they come up and destroy him and knock him into the ropes, into the wall. That's, that's exactly the way you have to play the great receivers with the great speed. Third down and four yards to go. But Taylor has hit Gary Mullen four times in this game. And one beautiful touchdown pass. Taylor trying to go over the middle and it's batted down by Tom Weaver, number 67. Now it is fourth down. And Denver inserts Marco Morales into the game to try to kick a field goal. This is a dangerous place right now for them to kick a field goal, too, because Denver is a good team on field goals, but Pittsburgh leads the league in blocking field goals. They can block this one and get a touchdown. This whole game will change immediately. Morales lining it up. Luke Taylor will spot the ball down at the 14, so this will be a 44-yard field goal attempt. It's long enough, but it hit the net wide to the right. Pittsburgh to return. Mitchell steps down the out-of-bounds line at the six. Sixty-five, John Norris down there, along with rookie Mitchell. Pittsburgh has it with 19 seconds to go, and Brenda Colmar lead his troops out from a first and ten situation at his own six. And a read ball, this is a dangerous place to be because you can give up a sack and a safety right here, so they got to be careful. Coming up at halftime in our Arena Bowl championship game, we'll be talking with the two head coaches, Tim Markham and Joe Herring, of a feature on Russell Hairston of Pittsburgh and an interview with the president and founder of Arena Football, Jim Foster. Omar to Hairston. And Russell scoots it up to about the 17. Goes out of bounds to stop the clock with 14 seconds left. Plenty of time left. But they're, what they're going to do is give him enough room, give Harrison plenty of room. He's such a threat deep. Let him catch it, force him out of bounds. Probably what Pittsburgh will do is try to get close enough to at least get three points. Psychologically, three is better than zero. Here's, here's a Pittsburgh team 
that led the league in scoring, averaging 45 points per game. Through the hands of Mike Powell, number 44. Incomplete pass that used two seconds. We're down to 12 seconds to go in the half. And it is second down and 10. Brendan Fulmar, 23 years old. Leads him up to the line of scrimmage. Pressure. To the end zone, it's intercepted by Gary Mullen. Mullen is going to down him in the end zone for a touchback. Russell Harrison complained, but Mullen was there to intercept the pass. Perfect example of the pregame show. Athlete against athlete, one on one. It was a tremendous play, but Mullen won this one now. <laughs> You watch Russell Harrison, he'll break, take to the outside, and he goes to the middle. Now, you'll see him, Mullen, playing soft, nice little bump, that's all right, as long as he didn't make an absurd effort to knock him down. He does a smart thing right there, stays down there, and they'll run out the clock now. That's the fifth Pittsburgh turnover this game, the third interception. And there is trouble in River City, three River City of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Denver Dynamite heading to the locker room with an 18-point lead. Denver capitalizing on two turnovers to turn him into touchdowns and a Whit Taylor touchdown pass to Gary Mullen to make it an 18 to nothing lead for Denver here at halftime. The head coach of the Denver Dynamite is Tim Markham. And Timmy, a tremendous effort by your ball club in the first half, particularly defensively, putting the pressure on Pittsburgh. Exactly. We've got a pass rush. That's the whole thing. That's the whole key. If we get continue the pass rush, we're going to control the football game. This is Lee Corso. Tim, what did you feed those defensive linemen in the pregame warm-up? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, you know, if they know what kind of game it is. And, and hey, you know, we've got a whole other half left. So and that's the thing we got to do is just continue the pressure continue the pressure up front we do that and we'll be successful good luck hey thanks Tim Mark of the head coach of the Denver Dynamite his ball club on top 18 to nothing here at the break when we come back we'll be profiling the MVP of arena football Pittsburgh Russell Hairston when we come back What do you and millions of other cable subscribers have in common? Holy cow! Your die-hard Cubs fans. Holy cow! Now, through August 15th, you can win an all-expense-paid trip to Chicago to see a Cubs game and be a guest announcer with Harry Carey. Holy cow! Just enter the world's greatest Chicago Cubs fan contest and you could be a winner. Holy cow! Entry forms available through your local cable system. Introducing Apollo's Gradual Hair Progression. The answer for people who want to regain a full head of hair one step at a time. With Apollo's unique three to six stage progression, we can blend added hair to natural so gradually that no one except you will know why you look so much better today. Counselor, to find out more about gradual hair progression, call Apollo. Your hair never looked more natural. People made me uh, unsure about my ability, and after the Bengals, I was really, you know, questioning. It. Nobody wants a six-four defensive back, and uh, I am six-four. Harrison put his disappointment behind it and decided to give Arena Football a try. My little league coach John Marchetti told me about it, and uh, this is why I was helping him coach at my old high school. And he said, well, go out there and give it a shot. And I was kind of nervous because it, I hadn't done anything in about a year, and I really went to the, the trial out of shape. And uh, we just figured it was an opportunity to play some more. On the field, Harrison was Arena Football's MVP, and at practice, the team's number one prankster. Our coach is uh, somewhat high-strung, and you, know, you can kind of get up under his skin really quick. So you know, I just just go out and try to have fun you know that's what you're supposed to do and I think I'm a little bit more playful and have more fun than I'm supposed to have out there it's not it's it's more entertainment than it is a job to me 
All kidding aside, Russell Hairston has made the most of his opportunity in arena football and is hoping to parlay his experience this summer into yet another shot at the National Football League. I think uh, right now the major concern was that, you know, they said that I wasn't fast enough and with my height, and uh, I've proved that I still have some of my speed left. And uh, they weren't willing to try me. You know, I, I don't think anybody was thinking about trying me as a receiver, and now that's all they're willing to try me at as a receiver. So I, I think that's what Arena Ball has done, you know, as far as my opportunity to play in the NFL. I, I'd like to have an opportunity to play in the NFL again. Uh, if it doesn't, I'd just like to uh, set some standards here in arena football that, you know, be hard to, to get to in the next couple of years. We're back at halftime, and my guest from the Sporting News, pro football editor Howard Balzer. And Howard, a first half where Russell Harrison was not much of a factor. That's true, Bob. In fact, he dropped one in the end zone that would have been a sure touchdown. But he's played well this season, obviously. You get over 1,000 yards in six games, and you're doing something right. But this is a guy that was a defensive back in college and now has found a new position to which to excel in. Do you think he's got a legitimate chance to play in the National Football League? Well, he might get a tryout. But I think really when you look at it, you have to judge the competition also. And he's been able to take advantage of some defensive backs that are a lot shorter than him and the run and shoot offenses that are employed in the USFL have been a, he's been able to take advantage of his height and his ability so he might get a look but in terms of making an NFL team I still have to say that's a long shot all right let me ask you about expansion it is definitely on the horizon for arena football are there enough quality players that could play this game available to stock 130 spots oh, I think so when you're talking about quality players on this level as long as they're competitive against each other that's all, all that's really important. I mean, in the NFL alone, there was 110 players cut in the last week at training camp, and there's going to be a whole bunch more cut before September rolls around. So in this type of game, I think there's plenty of players available. Thank you, Howard. My pleasure, Bob. Howard Balls with the Sporting News, my guest here at the championship game. We'll be back to talk with the founder and president of Arena Football, Jim Foster, and we continue from Pittsburgh in just a moment. I'm hard to please when it comes to cars. At times, I do go for luxury. Sometimes economy. Weekends, I want something sporty, but I never want to spend a lot of money. That's why I always go to Budget Rent-A-Car. Because Budget has a great selection of cars at low budget prices. If I can get the car I want, or the truck, at a budget price. Get 10% off any car or truck Monday through Thursday. Check the yellow pages for the budget office nearest you. <laughs> Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now, and three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. It's halftime of the Arena Bowl Championship game with the Denver Dynamite with a surprising 18 to nothing lead over the Pittsburgh Gladiators. Championship week here, the preview season coming to a conclusion, and Lee Corso had a chance to talk with founder president Jim Foster. I know there's going to be some trial and error, obviously, in your first season. Uh, what do you consider some, maybe some of the changes for next year, like in particular the playing rules? Well, we're going to make some adjustments on the playing rules. You know, the game this year was set up uh, to be a very offensive show, uh, a lot of passing. Uh, I think you're going to see the coaches come out next year and have a lot more opportunity to show their own autonomy in the way they, they coach the game and the way it's played. It'll be, you'll see more rushing next year probably than you did this year. Uh, the game's going to settle out a little bit. It's certainly going to evolve. Uh, we're going to go to four officials all the time next year. We are doing that for the first time tonight in our championship game. Uh, we're looking at even the possibility of a fifth eye-in-the-sky observer, which might be uh, unique to arena football but may help the coach cover the, uh, the use of the man-man uh, -man defense violations, which we really want to be careful about because we believe in the man-man -man defense in arena football. Uh, other things will really kind of come after a review of the season this fall and this winter, looking at the game tapes, uh, talking with players and coaches and officials. So it, it, the game will evolve. We know it's going to be a, a good game next year. Yeah. Obviously, there's going to be some more changes. That means there's going to be expansion. 
But what's your ideas and con uh, what's your feelings about expanding the Arena Football League? We're going to go slowly in this. That's the way we've done it for the last five years. My attitude has always been since the beginning, when other people said you've got a good idea, that we better take it slowly and make sure that every step of the way we're right in what we're doing. You know, we're not selling franchises. We're selling operating rights for investors to come in and run a division of our company for us and share in the profits. It's a very sane way to run a sports business. It's really never been done before because franchising has always been the way to go. We've got some uh, things in place that have been very well thought out that will control the spending of this league. But nevertheless, we want to take it slowly. Eight or ten teams geographically placed around the country with good investors, good business people involved, uh, good markets where they want arena football, where there's enthusiasm for it. You've got the expansion. Now you need to obviously uh, stock these teams with players. What are some of your rules and uh, concepts of the draft and how you're going to fill these uh, teams with players? What we're going to do is focus on the players that the NFL really can't take and, and look at them on a regional basis because the players that go to the National Football League are the collegiate players that are getting the publicity coming out of college. We want to take a player, for example, that might play for a Chicago team next year that comes out of the Big Ten. The Chicago club would have regional rights to all players in the Midwest primarily, and that would include a lot of the Big Ten schools, smaller schools. You might get a small college All-American. You might get an All-Big Ten player. He's known in that area of the country. He's going to be known uh, for his play, for his skills as an athlete, where if you put him on a team in the West Coast, he wouldn't be. So as a result, we go with a regional player allocation. That's the primary way to stock these teams next year. Then beyond that, players that don't sign that direction will be falling down in what we call a supplemental draft of, uh, probably about a month and a half before training camp and will be picked up that way in a more traditional draft. Okay, now you've got the players, you got the expansion, you're going to add some new officials. Where are they going to come from? We're going to have to get a lot more thorough in our officiating for next year. One thing we did this year was to control costs because it was a previous season. Was We basically used crews uh, centered in the, in the cities we were playing in. Next year we'll go to a more of an at-large format like the National Football League uses where, where officiating crews will be put together from around the country. We're going to have more money to work with next year, quite frankly. Just like we'll have better playing services next year, we'll have better officiating. Excuse me. Jim, uh, are injuries uh, a threat to putting the best players on the field throughout the entire season? Well, I think the biggest problem with injuries is we just need to get our players better conditioned for the arena game, the single platoon game. We had a lot of athletes come into training camp who thought they were in great condition, but what they found out was that the conditioning for what they've always done before, play uh, two platoon football, really didn't uh, carry a lot of weight with the way you play the game in the arena game. And, and the single platoon is going to require a lot more conditioning and a different type of conditioning, a lot more emphasis on aerobics, for example, less emphasis on uh, true bulk strength and more on quickness and durability. So we're working very seriously with our physicians and our trainers on developing an off-season program for our athletes will we'll get them into better shape to play the arena game and by doing that we feel that the uh, injury situation is going to drop quite a bit why do people like this game so much from your point uh, the things we hear the buzzwords we hear are this it's entertaining it's fast-paced it's fun and it's different than the National Football League. We're not coming out and trying to compete with the NFL. We're not trying to come out and clone the National Football League or be an imitation of the NFL. We're our own game. We're apples and oranges to the outdoor game. And that's exactly what we want to be, and that's what we want the public to perceive it as. Because it is a different game. It's still football. The chemistry's there. They're still down there knocking each other around, throwing the ball, catching it, having a lot of fun playing football. But it's a different game, and that's the way arena football is meant to be. Arena ball is fun, it's entertaining, and it's not a clone to the National Football League. The thoughts of the founder of President Jim Foster. Lee, your opinion of the first year of arena football. Well, first thing, they've had a lot of success, and sometimes people have success forget what business they're in. This man is in the entertainment business, and he uses football as his weapon, okay? As long as they don't mess around with this game too much, I think they're going to have some success. A couple of points we want to bring out. One, they need a turf that's adequate and professional. They need to change the turf. They need to invest in the turf. If they can invest in the turf, not only will it be good for injuries, but it'll also look a little bit better. Some of these turfs look like Bush League turfs. The length of the game issue has to be addressed. I know you like a 12-minute quarter. I like 12-minute quarters because I think the game will go quick. People will get in here, get out, and go home, and everybody will be excited. For this championship game tonight, they added a fourth official, and it paid off in the first quarter. Oh, absolutely. Right in the first part of the ball game, it, all, it turned this game around because because what happened, it was a very good call by Ed Manning that kept this game in good condition. The fourth official is absolutely a must to be successful. We'll be back in just a moment. We'll take a look at the first half highlights and talk with Pittsburgh coach Joe Herring as we continue after this. If you made hamburger patties the way most places make hamburger patties, you'd discover your thick, meaty burgers were suddenly dry, flat, and lifeless. 
So at Hardee's, we developed a way to make our quarter pound patties gently, to cook up thicker, full of natural juices. It's a complicated machine, but we can give you an idea of the principle we based it on. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. This is where Michael Jordan kept practicing his jump shot when he didn't make varsity. This is where George Brett kept fielding after his team lost the state finals. Wildcat ball. And this is where Walter Payton played every game his freshman year as a drummer in the marching band. What do these legends have in common? They've always had a will to win. And they've always had a Wilson. We're back at Pittsburgh. Denver leading the homestanding Gladiators 18 to nothing at halftime of this championship game. The Denver Dynamite took advantage of a couple of turnovers early to score and jump out to a 12 nothing lead. And then Lake Carso, that great pass combination of Whit Taylor and Gary Mullen came to the forefront. All right, Taylor got good protection by his offensive lineman. He turns his shoulders, sets his feet, and throws a shot. Now watch this. Mullen beats his man to the inside in that post route. He beat Rock Richmond 29 for a touchdown. It was a great job. Now, turn around. Here's the star. Russell Harrison had his chance. Watch this. He takes his eyes off the ball. Can you believe that? Oh, he wish he had that one back. 18 touchdown receptions for Russell Harrison in the regular season, but couldn't grab that one. Time now for the Hardy's Coach's Corner. And Joe Herring, the head coach of the Gladiators, is with us. Joe, you made a calculated gamble starting Hohensee tonight. It did not pay off. You had to switch and go to Brendan Fomar. Will Brendan start the second half? Yeah, he will. Uh, we decided that was the momentum change we needed. Uh, we thought that uh, Mike was ready in practice, but you never know until you get in the game. He uh, is having a hard time getting the snaps up, obviously, because they got two touchdowns out of that. So we're just lucky we're still in the ball game with the way we've been executing on offense. Joe, this is Lee Corso. Their defensive line is just playing unbelievably well. What did you talk to your team about in that pass rush on the quarterbacks? Well, we're going to try to, of course, we're going to just give a special effort to protect Brendan and give him time because if he gets time and we can get Russell and the other receivers open, we'll get back in this game in a hurry. Okay, good luck, Joe. Thank you. Joe Herring, the head coach of the Gladiators. A look at the first half statistics, and the big one is at the bottom of the page. Pittsburgh, five turnovers. Three passes were intercepted. They lost two fumbles. Everything else is pretty even, but Denver was able to get those turnovers early and turn them into points. And those turnovers, a lot of them have been caused by the defensive line from Denver being physically stronger and eating up the offensive line from the Pittsburgh Gladiators. 18 to nothing, Denver leading. Rich Prather with a rushing touchdown. Gary Mullen, as you saw in the highlights, catching that fine touchdown pass from Wood Taylor. That's going to be Denver to receive the opening kickoff here in the second half. And the deep man, Darrell Taylor, who led the league in kick returns this season. He's the lone safety man for the Dynamite. And Pittsburgh will be kicking off. Barefooted Korean-born Lee Larson will be booting it away. Lee, before the ball game, you and I were talking before we came on the air about the home field advantage and what a big aspect of this game we thought the crowd would be. They haven't had a lot to cheer about tonight. Well, you always try to, on the way away from home, try to get ahead and hold on for the whole team of rally. Kickoff sails out of bounds. And they'll mark this ball upfield as they, the fight, the fight is on for the football and you can keep a ball that goes into the stand. That's a pretty good souvenir to take home. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm I'm going down there next game. You get a free ball? That's terrific. They'll find a play. They probably take it out of the players. I lost his paycheck, though. First out of 10 for Denver from the five-yard line. Okay, if Denver's going to win this game, they've got to control the ball. But if Pittsburgh's going to win it, they've got to win it on defense. They cannot allow Denver to score anymore. And moving his Taylor. With Taylor to throw, incomplete. The intended receiver was Chris Brewer. And Mike Stoops, number 30, there to defend. As I told you before, all the other telecasts, in arena ball, the first two series of the second half usually set the tempo of which team's going to take the momentum. This is a very important series for Pittsburgh. They've got to shut Denver down. They have been able to do the job with the pass rush this season. Best defensive team in arena football. They had 
The most passes intercepted with 13, the most sacks with 33. But it's been all Denver, and Taylor throws complete to Mullins. Brock Richmond is there to protect, but that's going to be a Denver first down. Now Mark Mullen out of bounds at the 17. You know, it's, it's really rare when the coaches will tell you their game plan before, but last night they told us, Tim Markham did, that they were going to isolate number one, Gary Mullen, on whomever he was and read the coverage. You know, let's go down if the guy's on the inside, break outside. If he's on the outside, break inside. And they're doing it over and over again and doing it real well. Would you come up defensively and challenge Mullen? No, I do, the, I do the same thing to do it right now. Just hope he's an incomplete or two, a rush to pass it right now, like that. Taylor gets it underway, and it's intercepted by Pittsburgh. Rock Richmond makes the interception, and Pittsburgh has got it. First down and 10 from the Denver 23. With Taylor, suffers his first interception of the game. Rock Richmond ties the league lead with four interceptions during the regular season. Some pressure on Whit Taylor, and Richmond was there to pick it off. Absolutely, a lot of pressure on Taylor that time. And watch Richmond make a good ten. Now Richmond, right there, dives again. He's 29 years old. He's one of the oldest players in this league. Pass through the hands of Russell Hairston and up into the crowd. Omar with a hot pass and. Hairston was unable to bring it down. Okay, there's two ways to beat a pass rush. Number one, they did exactly the right thing. You go back three steps and you throw it quick before they can get to you, or you leave more men in the block for you. Hairston wide to the right side. Brendan Fulmar coming out of the bullpen for Mike Owens. Here's a quick pass to the right side. And Jim Rafferty. Jimmy getting it up to the 20-yard line, and it's going to be third down. That pass play gains four yards. Third and six. Two reasons for the short passes. One, to get Fulmar some confidence, and two, don't let him get hit. They're trying to get rid of the ball quick because those linemen have been eating up the defensive linemen from Denver have been eating up those offensive linemen from the Pittsburgh right here. Omar came into the game completing 58% of his passes. Third and six. Omar comes back and throws it incomplete. Jim Rafferty, 28, doing some pointing out there against Trimble, but there was no penalty play. Rafferty was going across the middle, and he tried to, to make a break, and he crumbled. Now watch. Omar is rushed out of the pocket and has to throw. Now watch at the top of your screen. Rafferty will come across the middle right there, and he gets bumped. And I'll tell you what, I think he was right. That was pass interference. Fourth down and six, and Pittsburgh's going to go for it at the Denver 20-yard line. Omar pumps. Receiver falls down incomplete. Hairston is upset. Mullen defending. Denver takes over. And Mullen there to remind Hairston the pass was no good. It has been an evening of frustration for Pittsburgh and an evening of tribulation for Denver. Dynamite leading by 18. He's a hamburger. Getting hard and dry. Because it's cooking on a flame that's too high. At Hardee's, we make our quarter-pound hamburgers at a lower temperature. So they cook up thicker, succulent, full of natural juices. And the flavor doesn't go up in smoke. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Cable home of the National Football League is ESPN. And the preseason schedule just a couple of weeks away. We begin with the Bears in Miami to challenge the Dolphins on team plus eight regular season games in the Pro Bowl here on ESPN. Arena Bowl 87 here in Pittsburgh tonight. Dynamite leading 18 to nothing. Whip Taylor, the Denver quarterback, is 9 for 19 for 124 yards. Throwing, 
complete to Mullen. At the 20, it's a down to the Pittsburgh 19. Mullen and Hairston have been going head to head. Mullen, that's not making the reception. Okay, what they're doing again, it doesn't make any difference who's covering them. That was a recut again. He comes out and he says, I'm going to throw the ball to you. Now watch him on the bottom of your screen. You'll watch Mullen come off the ball. As he comes off the ball, Harrison is backpedaling. He's reading him. He's off the ball. It's a short pass. If he's up there tight, he runs past him. Great theory, and they're doing it perfectly. Ten minutes to go in the third quarter. Taylor faking. Now has to scramble. And he's taken down at the 19. That time, Dimitrenko got to him, able to put on some pressure. Okay, now remember one thing. Denver is leading right now 18 to nothing, but they're also leading in the second half because they made a mistake and they stopped Pittsburgh. Now, if they score now, watch out. I tell you what, it's going to be a whole new game if they get any kind of points right now. Suck it down to 10 for Whip Taylor and company. Taylor throwing, and it's incomplete at the 12-yard line. Chris Brewer trying to hang on. Mike Stoops is there to run him into the board. But Mike, Mike Stoops did an excellent thing, shows he's well coached from Iowa. As he came across, he stripped the man. Stripping him means if he catches it, you bring your arm hard across his arms and rip him loose, and the ball falls due. That's a great play there by Mike Stoops of stripping the football. Imagine Lee played at Iowa. His dad was a high school coach, so he's had good training all around. I tried to recruit he and his brother to come to Indiana. They went both to Iowa, good players and nice people. Third and ten. Taylor, incomplete. And tenant receiver Richard Rogers, number 32. Rogers is a unique player in this league. He was released by Chicago. Rogers was picked up by Denver. Chicago Brewers let him go six foot, 200 pounds from California, and he's been playing very well. I think by picking up Rogers and Forte, I think they really picked up two excellent football players. It could be the difference in them winning and losing this game. Marco Morales is in to attempt a field goal of 35 yards. He's 0 for 3 in field goals in this game. Denver is 2 for 25 in field goals this season, regular season and playoffs. Taylor able to get it down, but it's off the net. And Pittsburgh covers it for a touchback. The Denver kicking game is still woeful, but the Dynamite still leads 7.50 to play in the third quarter. Summer, you need the airline with low fares to more places. The biggest bargain airline in the land, United. I got a vacation. Be cool, boys. And I'm not just flying. A low fare. Nice tip it. I'm flying a vacation in the friendly skies. I guess I'm go back to Nashville and sell a little more lumber and get back into the swing of things again. It's been a, it's been a fun four weeks and uh, I'm really looking forward to doing it again next year. Lynn Taylor, the Denver quarterback, he was mentioning the fact that he's working in the lumber company. That's where Timmy Markham called him and said, hey, why don't you come play arena football about four weeks ago, and what a job he has done for Denver. In the leadership department, there's nobody better in this league than Wood Taylor. Speaking of passing, the Gladiator passing game has failed them tonight, albeit dropped passes. But Pittsburgh is 9 for 28, and Fulmar is 2 for 10. Pressure by the defensive line is the best pass defense in the history of any football. Fulmar throws, and it's complete. John McClennan to the 10, and stretches out to the 11-yard line. 7.25 left to play here in the third quarter. Budweiser keeps the action going so you can enjoy the game. This Bud's for you. Bob Rathman and Lee Corso. Arena ball 87. Number leading 18 to nothing. And a penalty flag flies. Some movement in that line. 
number 67, Tom Weaver, may have been the guilty party. I can explain it to you what happened. 67 on the offense, three-yard penalty. Okay, what happened, 67, Tom Weaver from Kentucky State put his hand down, and once an offensive lineman puts his hand down, he cannot move it up and make a false start. That's exactly what happened. That's the first time Joe Herring's been off the bench since the start of the game. I don't think he likes that hockey bench when Tim Markham doesn't have to be in the stands. McClellan in motion. Omar throwing, incomplete for Harrison, up at the 17-yard line. Six forty left to play here in the third quarter, and Russell Harrison, the arena football MVP with 18 touchdown catches, and he's caught only three balls tonight. But, mark my words, it won't be long before he gets a big one somewhere somehow. Omar brought down from behind at the one-yard line, and that time it was number 82, Keith Smith, credited with the sack. Smith was second in sacks for Denver with five this year, and second in the ball club in tackles. Watch him on the right side, number 85. He gets a quick jump, and he beats number 67, Weaver to the outside, number 82, Keith Smith makes a nice move, and I'll tell you what, there's another dangerous play. They block this one, and hopefully it might go out of the, out of the uh, if it goes out of the end zone, it's a two-point safety. Denver's fourth sack of the game means that Larson now must attempt a 63-yard field goal attempt from his own end zone. And the kick is going to be short. And coming up to take it is Darrell Taylor. 15 spins away. And is dropped at the 17-yard line. Five minutes and 35 seconds to play in the third quarter. Denver continues to lead 18-0. Experience the most luscious sunrise in the world. Hardy's Canadian Sunrise Biscuit. Real Canadian bacon cheese, farm fresh egg, and hickory smoked bacon on Hardy's made from scratch rise and shine biscuit. For a taste so special, it'll brighten your whole day. Hardy's, we're out to win you over. Five minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Denver leads 18 to nothing. And it's only a three touchdown lead and Lee you pointed out that points can come fast and furious in this game but you just get the sensation here the crowds out of the game Denver look who's leading 18 right nothing over there. they've got control of this football game one of the reasons why they got control of the ball game is they're winning a lot game up front in the trenches Vanderbilt will flip tail in the throw touchdown Richard Rodgers Pinpoint pass by Whit Taylor, and Denver has now jumped out to a 24 to nothing lead. Second touchdown pass for Whit Taylor. Boy, they gave that, they gave Whit Taylor enough time, and there's no way that Richard Rodgers is not going to beat Mike Stoops deep, 32 over 30. But again, the secret to that play was the fact that they gave him time to throw the ball deep. Taylor will now hold for Marco Morales. Movement on the line and penalty flag to them. Pittsburgh so desperately trying to rush in there and charge through the line and block the kick. Defensive encroachment. Well, Bill Parkinson. Defensive encroachment, the penalty kickoff. So again, Morales will try the point after. This bird trying to rush. And the kick is off and the kick is good. So Marco Morales hits the extra point and Denver puts on another point to their lead. 25-0 Dynamite. 
down through the years, the big games, the special games, always seem to live on in your memory. The excitement of baseball. It doesn't end when the game ends, and neither does your need to know. That's why so many baseball fans read the Sporting News, America's sports authority for over 100 years. The Sporting News gives you complete, in-depth coverage by more than 40 staff writers reporting right from the scene of the action. The teams, the stars, the strategies, the stats and standings, the pulse-pounding play-by-play excitement. Everything you want, you'll find right here in the Sporting News. It's great reading, and now you can get in on a great half-price offer. Grab a pencil quick, and here's a friend with all the details. Call now and get 40 issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of $5.45. You'll also get special preview issues at no extra cost. So call now, toll-free, 1-800-526-5000. That's 1-800-526-5000. I think the fatigue factor. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be as tiring as it is. I think after the first game, uh, it was a real surprise, you know, the fatigue factor and going both ways and having to run up and down the field so much. Oh, no fatigue. That last play for Richard Rogers scoring that touchdown. Well, he's been a great addition to this ball club. He plays both ways very well. Hanging high, and it's going to be Ricky Mitchell to return. And Denver swarming, running Mitchell down at the six-yard line. Now watch the protection on this play. The linemen make great protection. There's a good block there, a nice hold by 82, and then Taylor throws it deep. Now watch the concentration on Rodgers. He looks the ball in his hands. He's got Mike Stoot number 30 twisted around, and you never try to defend a man like that. At, at another angle, you'll see him on a top of your picture come down. He's got him. He fakes to the outside. Then he breaks to the inside and runs right past him. He gave him a little double clutch and ran right past Stoops. Stoops is a great tackler, but I don't know what kind of pass he's going to use those defense. Another change at quarterback. Starter Mike Cohensey is back at the controls for Pittsburgh. Throwing from his own end zone and way over the head of Ricky Mitchell. And the turf took a beating. The players just kicked it back into place. Now what Pittsburgh's got to do, Bob, right here is don't panic. It's, it's just, they're just, this might be the new secret way of stopping the Denver pass rush. They'll just get them and catch them in the, in the turf right there right, and make them all trip. It's a new, they'll have a rule next year and they'll call it a turf rule, that you can't roll the turf up. <laughs> Number 20, Kelly Kirschbaum, literally had the rug pulled out from underneath him. I'd just like to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night on a rug like this. Never make it. 4 10 to play. Owenson. Mitchell can't hang on at the eight, just off his fingertips. I tell you what, they're putting so much pressure on Owen. See, he's running for his life, but he does set his feet, throws off his right foot well. Now, Mitchell's in good position to catch this football, and as he goes up to catch it, watch the ground. Oh, he almost had it. Would have been a sensational catch. But again, I can't repeat as much as I'm repeating over and over again. The essence of this game is the pass rush. Now, there's a fine all-around athlete. In fact, Jim Foster told me he was the only player to play every down of every game in the history of arena ball. Two years. Pittsburgh. They've been blanked. It's 25-0 Denver and third and ten. And Hohenson. Incomplete and a penalty fly. Gary Mullen trying to plead his case, but it's going to be pass interference. Absolutely. Now, I got in Ed Manning a couple of weeks ago for a bad call, but that was a great call. But pass you know why? Number one on the defense, eight-yard penalty in the first down. The reason it was a great call is because he's in perfect position being that fourth man back. Now watch. He's on the top of the screen. You watch the receiver come across. On the top of your picture, you see Ed Manning, the official, watching it. See him watch him come to the top of the screen. What a great play by the official. Isn't that something? Positioning is 90% of the official's No game. question. Three minutes to play in the third quarter. Pittsburgh now with a new series. It's first and ten. Owens into the near side and Hairston. And he's out of bounds at the 21. Lee, here's a stat about Pittsburgh. In the regular season, 
They've played 24 quarters. They were shut out in only two. They have not scored in two quarters, and it's going to be three quarters here if, unless they can put points on the board in the next two minutes and 35 seconds. It goes to show you if the pass rush is so important, then why doesn't teams draft more defensive linemen first? You know why? Because the crowd boos if you take defensive linemen, but they win the games, not the quarterbacks. Owenson to Hairston. Out of bounds of Denver. Pittsburgh first down at the 16-yard line. Boy, that was a great play by Harrison because he came down, he broke to the outside. But Hornsey's doing something now. They've got a planned roll. They'll take three steps back. They'll invite those good linemen on. Then they'll automatically roll. Uh, Joe Herring is right there on the left. Is Perry Moss. He's the offensive coordinator. But Joe knows if they can get a touchdown here, they can still come back and win this ball game. Time winding down in the third quarter. He throws, and it's going to be complete at the nine-yard line. Shy of a first down, and making the grab, Jim Rafferty. Boy, oh, that was his third receiver on that cut. He sent two men to the left, but they were both covered, and he automatically swung his eyes to the right and hit Rafferty. That was a good play. Jim Rafferty played on two NCAA playoff teams at Colgate in 82 and 83. From Mountaintop, Pennsylvania. Here's Owenson with a minute... 10 and the clock running in the third quarter. Pittsburgh looking for its first point. Second and two. Inside hand off to McClennan. Goes nowhere. Okay, the reason they ran that play is with a misdirection play. In other words, they've been getting so much pressure, they tried a little delay. It didn't work, but it might have slowed them down a little bit. If Pittsburgh doesn't get it right here, then they've got to go fourth down for a touchdown because three points at a time will not win this game. Fourth down earlier in this quarter. Did not make it. And Joe Herring's gladiators looking at a 25-point deficit. Owens oh, look out from behind and a sack. Number 60 out of West Virginia, Chuck Harris. Dex Owenson. Back at the 17-yard line. Chuck Harris comes from the left. As he, you watch, he runs on the right. Number 68. 68. Wait, Yates made a busted assignment. He blocked to his left. He was supposed to block number 60. Chuck Harris from the right. And now you've got to be kidding me. But he's going to go for it because he cannot try to win with a field goal. seconds, two, one, they get the snap off in time, Horn sounds in in the quarter, the throw, intercepted by Denver, and Steve Trimble, Trimble brings it back, to the he breaks into the clear, and he's going to go for the touchdown, on the final play of the third quarter, Steve Trimble with his third interception of the game, and he takes it the distance for the touchdown, and Denver now leads 31 to nothing. a little pressure. He's rushed. He throws it. But watch. Watch Trimble reach up and grab it at tight. Great play. Now, as he's running, I want you to watch him call a double clutch. He'll start out nice and slow, and then he'll find the open area, and then he puts on a burst of speed right here. Wow! See that? He ran to the open. He slowed him up, made them slow up, and Federico, number 45, dove at him, but it was all gone. The kid from Maryland, 5'11", 190 pounds. Whew! What a great play. Marco Morales to kick the extra point. And the kick is good. So the final play of the third quarter is a touchdown and an interception by Steve Trimble, and it's all Denver. Working hard can really take it out. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. We 
are gathered here today... You'd expect this Panasonic Omni Movie camcorder to shoot in daylight. If anyone believes this couple should not be married, let him speak now. You might expect this Panasonic camcorder to shoot in room light. Let him speak now. But what you don't expect is that it can shoot by the light of one candle. And it's VHS. Let him speak now. Camcorders that do the unexpected make Panasonic just slightly ahead of our time. Well, there ain't nothing better than a bigger burger. Some fast food places will do anything to sell you a meal. Try our new family size fries. Anything. There's a luau in every bite. Presenting the world's smallest hamburger. Well, if you'd sooner do without all those gimmicks, you're invited to Hardee's for thick, juicy, 100% pure American beef burgers, which, quite frankly, speak for themselves. Because at Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Quarters in the books here in Arena Bowl 87, and the Gladiator handing out some souvenirs to the fans. A couple of them are being returned to the playing field. Wait, that guy's got a pretty good arm. Let me tell you what, that's the most completions that Pittsburgh's had all night <laughs> by the Gladiator. <laughs> and that girl, Judy Staples, is the production manager. She was handing them the balls. 32-0 Denver as we start the fourth quarter with the Dynamite kicking off. Well, Bob, it's going to take a miracle. You predicted it to be the Pittsburgh uh, kicking game. It was a difference. <laughs> it's not over yet. Here comes Ricky Mitchell at the five. Breaks to the ten and brought down at the 12 yard line. Any town that can have the immaculate reception by Franco Harris can come from behind and score 33 in the fourth quarter. Boy, a dejected Joe Herring on the Pittsburgh bench. That bench. I really think that restricts his enthusiasm the way he coaches. You've got to sit in that bench and you can't do anything. You can't move around. Well, Tim Markham's on the other side walking up and down the field. I really think that's a disadvantage to Joe Harry. Pittsburgh has it first and 10 from their own 12 yard line. Mike Owens Lee and a quarterback has some time. Now gets rid of it and it's incomplete. He had John McClendon wide open. 65, John Harris, 82, Pete Smith, 260 to 250 pounds, took the whole offensive line and put him right in Mike Hornsey's face. That was amazing. And that's why he had a scramble and he had to hit, try to hit McClendon. Wide open, couldn't hit him. And the fact that these guys are playing both ways. And they still here in the fourth quarter have enough to make that surge. 10 of 25 tonight, finds Harrison, and he's out of bounds at the 20. Harrison has been bottled up. He's frustrated. He can't go long. The reason why he can't go long is they're playing him soft, and they're not giving the quarterback enough time to stop and throw it deep. It's going to be third down and just about two yards to go. And we're leading it 32 to nothing. 13 20 to play in the fourth quarter. Complete. Jim Rafferty making the grab on the near side. Jim Rafferty played both offensive and defensive. Cole Gainey was a split end and also a defensive back. This is. Pacific Arena in Pittsburgh, Arena Bowl 87, visiting Denver, leading Pittsburgh 32 to nothing. And 12 minutes and 45 seconds left to play. Bob Rathman along with Lee Corso tonight from Pittsburgh, and Mike Owensy is tripped up, and he's brought down back at his own 23. John Norris.
Norris, number 65, got back there to break up the play. I tell you, John Norris got the play, but let me tell you something. Keith Smith went around Willis Yates like he was, Yates was standing in concrete. He went around him so quick, and he forced him up the middle. That's what they're doing. They're coming from the outside, forcing Holensee up the middle, and then sticking him as he gets moving forward. Holensee throws, complete to Rafferty. And he's into the board. But now they say he stepped out of bounds, back up to the 18. That is not enough for a first down. It's going to be third and five. Denver's doing something real good. They'll take it now. That time they took 82 Smith out and brought number 60 Chuck Harris. They're alternating their defensive linemen in there, getting a good pass rush. Tim Markham is the defensive coach. Has come up with a great and brilliant game plan. Hollinson fumbles the snap and goes down at the 21. That is one thing I believe, I believe the coaches have worked on over the course of this previous season. And that is the fact that they have to teach their defensive players to play more than one position and rotate them not only in and out of the game, but also rotate them in positions defensively. It's going to be complete. And Rafferty moves the football down to the 11 yard line, and that's going to be enough for a Pittsburgh first down. Wasn't that an interesting piece of strategy? They line up on the ball. You see that? Now that Denver can't alternate their players in and out. So this is what they're going, what they call the two minute drill. It's, uh, no just come up and throw the ball up and down the field. Owens looking, throwing. It's complete for a touchdown to Russell Harrison. The drought is over, and Pittsburgh is on the board. He gets pressured, but he rolls out to the right. Now watch it. He pumps deep. He's got good vision to see Harrison coming. Harrison beats Mullen, number one, across the middle and catches the ball in for a touchdown. Now, it's not over. I know you say it's 32 to 6, but this game, the offense can't sit on the ball and use the clock. That's why the game's not over yet. Russell Harrison, initial touchdown reception in this championship game. Now the Gladiators going for two. Looking, still looking. Now he's got his man. A penalty fly goes down. Rafferty makes the catch for the two-point conversion, but there was a penalty fly thrown. Referee Bill Parkinson. Pass interference. Defense number one. Point is good. Two points. The interference was on Gary Moe on the play stand. Two-point conversion for Pittsburgh. 11-17 to play in the fourth quarter. The Gladiators trying to put a late rally together. In this reconstituted, freeze-dried, free-mixed world of ours, it's hard to find a breakfast that's totally made from scratch. Syrup on that? Well, at Hardee's, our biscuits are made just that way. With no shortcuts like some other guys use. But then that's probably why they taste so good. And why at Hardee's, we can truly say, we're out to win you over. Finally, the Pittsburgh fans have something to cheer about. Russell Harrison with a touchdown catch. And 11-17 to play in the game. Denver 32 and Pittsburgh 8. The deep man for Denver 42, Darrell Taylor. Getting ready to take the Lee Larson kick. Denver, Denver sneaking up a few players toward the line. No onside kick. Larson lets it go to the end zone. And it's going to be returned by Mullen. 15. Mullen looking for a hole and finally goes down at the 18-yard line. The first championship in arena football draws 13,232 to the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. And Lee, there's no denying that the fans have come to really enjoy the excitement in the arena for this new football game. They're loving the game. Now, here's how Pittsburgh can win the ball game. They're going to get the ball four more times. They've got to score four touchdowns in a row, and they can't allow another point. Here's the pitch. Brainer gets away, and he's out of bounds at the 20-yard line. 
keep in mind in the fourth quarter until that one minute warning the clock does not stop on out of bounds play that's the difference in indoor football if it was outdoor football right now they'd line up in a woody hayes t formation and run the ball conservatively and use the clock but they can't do it here but they can still win the game pittsburgh if they can come up with a big play on defense 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter and that clock is running 32 to 8 denver leads and the dynamite with it with taylor throwing and it is complete to gary mullen at the six yard line oh what a grab by mullen he was flat on his back rock richmond was defending but now Denver's got it first and goal, and they're going to mark Mullen at the seven-yard line as he hits the 100-yard mark in receiving yardage. He's had 11 touchdowns this year, and I tell you, he's really playing well both ways. He's a, he's a perfect example of the two-way player tonight. Taylor and Mullen have been dynamite. <laughs> and off. Chris Brewer wiggles his way to the six. You might ask, why did Denver run that ball? Why didn't they just keep throwing and maybe get another touchdown? They run it to keep that defensive line on. He's a good runner. He's averaged 4.7 this year. He's a first-team all-league player. Was, uh, Brewer, rather, was fourth in the league in rushing. He was seventh in the league in scoring with six touchdowns. Nine minutes to go in the game. comes in motion. Taylor throwing to the end zone, and he finds Gary Mullen for the touchdown. And Mullen fires the football into the seats as Denver now takes a 30-point lead at 38 to 8. With Taylor to Gary Mullen. That combination league clicks again. You can't say enough about the pass protection again because they gave him enough time, and there's nobody in the league that can stop Gary Mullen. Rock Richards a good player, but he's not that good. The kick by Marco Morales is good. And with 8.47 to play in the fourth quarter, Denver leads Pittsburgh 39-8. to 8. Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now, and three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. with low fares to all 50 states. The biggest bargain airline, United. I need a vacation, and I'm not just flying. <laughs> I'm flying a vacation in the friendly skies. The time remaining at the top of the screen there, 847, the fourth quarter, Denver leading Pittsburgh 39 to 8. The Dynamite ready to kick it off here. The deep man, number eight, Ricky Mitchell. touchback and yet another souvenir here at the Civic Arena. We're going to watch this touchdown play from Whit Taylor's angle. Now watch, Taylor moves to the left. He gets good protection, except he has to scramble a bit now. He's got good vision, and there comes Muller number one on Rock Richmond 29. You cannot stop a man that has all that area to run, particularly as good as Mullen is without pressing the quarterback and getting in his face. You can't give him that vision. Mike Owens is the Pittsburgh quarterback. Tim Rafferty coming in motion. Owens 
Kelsey trying to avoid the safety. Unloads incomplete up to the 15-yard line. John McLennan, the intended receiver. And Weaver is injured. Tom Weaver, the center and nose guard out of Kentucky State, is down. And there's a timeout on the field. We have eight minutes and ten seconds left in the championship game, but then we're leading Pittsburgh by 31. summer you need the airline with low fares to all 50 states the biggest bargain airline united i need a vacation and i'm not just flying <laughs> In this reconstituted, freeze-dried, pre-mixed world of ours, it's hard to find a breakfast that's totally made from scratch. A syrup on that? Well, at Hardee's, our biscuits are made just that way, with no shortcuts like some other guys use. But then that's probably why they taste so good. And why at Hardee's, we can truly say, we're out to win you over. Tom Weaver, number 67, for Pittsburgh being helped up and off the field here at the Civic Arena. Still bending at the waist. The injury factor in arena football. A lot of folks have talked about this, Lee, and here's a graphic about the games missed due to injuries, but in terms of serious injuries, a remarkably low statistic. Absolutely. Now, the problem they're going to have is this is after a six-game schedule. If they go to a 12 to 14 game schedule and you start doubling those numbers, then you got a problem. Only three injuries that caused games missed occurred in the last four weeks. Now, there's, a, there's the players used on a based on a 16-man roster and here's some of the changes they had to make and those are the players used all season long i think uh jim foster made up a good point the players will know next year basically what the, how to come in what kind of physical condition to come in they'll change the turf which could cause a problem they'll get lighter and quicker players and i think everything is going to improve in this league now weaver is all right because basically he's moving around and it doesn't mean that his knee is bad when you see him carry off a player and his knee he is dangling. You, you got troubles. Eight minutes to play in the game. Denver 39 and Pittsburgh game. Second and ten for the Gladiators. Quick pass to Harrison. And also brings it out to the 15. And that's going to be enough for a Pittsburgh first and ten. Well, you know, Pittsburgh's had a great year. They're, they're losing this ball game, and everybody will remember this game, but Harrison Ware was a great player, the most valuable player. They set the league attendance. Joe Herring has done a great job. It's just one of those nights. Owens oh, throwing to Harrison incomplete. That time, it was Clyde Skipper who drew the defensive assignment on Harrison. Now, Clyde Skipper did a nice thing here. He closed on the ball, which means he gave Harrison the inside. Now, watch. As soon as he comes out, you watch his right arm. You always try to go across the arm that's closest to the receiver. And that was a perfect picture of Clyde Skipper doing that. Oregon Tech, somebody taught him very, very well at Oregon Tech. You know the nickname of Oregon Tech? No. The Hustling Owls. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Here's a long pass. It's incomplete. I'm surprised you didn't try to schedule them when you were at Indiana. Well, I tell you, we did try to play, but we had to play Nebraska instead <laughs> because the guarantee was more money. That's one thing. I, You know, I set the record in the Big Ten when I was coaching there. I was the homecoming game for more teams than anybody in the history of the Big Ten. Well, you know you're really bad when you're somebody's homecoming game. Now, that guy is dejected, but he shouldn't be. It's his first year as a head coach. He had a great season. He just got clobbered up front tonight by a really aggressive defensive line. Owenson throwing complete. And the catch is being made there by Rock Richmond. Right in front of the Denver bench. And they're coming right at you here in this championship game. Strong 
hit by 32, Richard Rogers. Owens is going. Richmond is out of bounds at the 17. Clock continues to run. We have 5.45 left in the game. They're not, they're not going to a huddle right now for two reasons. One, they're getting the Denver team that can't call it change their defenses. And number two, they don't have time. What are, they're going to go back and huddle. Say, let's throw it. It's 39 to 8. Everybody run out. Help protect me, and I'll throw it someplace. That's it. Watch. To the end zone. And a pass interference call coming up. Harrison being guarded by Rogers, and Richard guilty of interference. Illegal shot. Number 32 on the defense. That'll be a three-yard carry in the first down. Let me explain that a Chuck rule means. Chuck means that the defensive man could hit him one time, but he cannot hit him with the inside of five yards. After five yards, you can't hit him. Now, there's a perfect example. Watch. He lets him come down. Rodgers does. Bottom of the frame there. Now he'll hit him right there. Boom. That's a Chuck. He's got to do that inside of five yards of line of scrimmage to be legal. And he was seven yards off of him when the play began. Here's Hollinson once again. Throws incomplete. And was over the line of scrimmage when he released the football on a penalty fly. To well, that's tough. That's tough because basically when you're rushed and all those guys are after you, you have no idea and you're just trying to save yourself. Five remaining, and as you mentioned, Lee, it's going to be a long time before Mike Cohen, Steve, Brendan Fulmar, and the Gladiators can get this game out of their minds. Well, the, the bad thing about it is the last game of the year, there's no next week. Exactly. You know, it, it's, and nobody ever remembers who lost the Super Bowl or the Arena Bowl. We only remember the winner. They tripped up back to the 21 yard line. It'll be third down. Well, let me say something about 82 Key Smith, 65 John Harris, 60 Chuck Harris, 50 Pat Kane, 92 Bill Forte. They won this game. Not Taylor and Mullen. Those defensive linemen beat that man because they have absolutely destroyed the offensive line of the Pittsburgh Gladiators. And they dominated the game right from the opening kickoff. Pittsburgh was never in this game. Owens dropping the ball. And now it's going to be fourth down. You know, you'll say, well, why did he fumble the ball all week? Coach Harry and those guys, they're good coaches. Coach Markham there has got a great defensive plan. He didn't fumble it in practice because they didn't hit anybody in practice. In pro football, you don't hit anybody. Because if you hurt somebody, you don't have enough guys left. Fourth down. Oh, and see, can't get away. And that's been the story of the game. E. Smith that time with a sack, and Denver's going to get the football at the Pittsburgh 19. I just voted for the, uh, the most valuable play in the game. I put down the defensive line of Denver. A good choice. Now, remember, another Eight thing. sacks. Remember one thing. Denver got a lot of points scored on him in one game, and Tim Markham took the pressure by saying that he was responsible for the defense. Well, we ought to say something right now, that Tim Markham is responsible now for the Denver defense that's got Pittsburgh only with eight points. That man right there deserves a lot of credit. Whitsale is the Denver quarterback, and He's just front of the end zone, and Mullen is wide open. Touchdown, Denver. Gary Mullen catching his third touchdown pass of the game, and Denver now leads 45 to 8. You might say, well, that's rubbing them in. Well, I'll tell you what, they can't run it because they don't have any runs, and they've got to throw it, and the guy's wide open, so you might as well throw it for a touchdown. Unbelievable. Gary Mullen has been sensational tonight. Nine catches, 125 yards, and three touchdowns. 
But that young man out of West Virginia. Natalie Flags flying. False start on the offense. Three yard penalty. Bill Parkinson. Marking off the penalty. Whit Taylor is in his last four passes. And again, Tom Weaver headed to the Pittsburgh locker room with 310 to play. deflected by Federico and lost. 3-11 to play in the championship game. Denver 45 to win. Like the original party animal. That's says he is the party. The Ghostbusters go! Three minutes and 11 seconds remaining. Denver's Gary Mullen catching his third touchdown pass. And the Dynamite now leading it 45 to 8 over Denver. Morales getting set to kick it off here for the Dynamite. And play when you consider all the facets of arena football uh, and as the kickoff sales on a bounce, as you consider all the facets of what Jim Foster tried to do to put this league together, you have to say that this, in just about any way you look at it, has been a pretty good success for the first year out of the shoot. you got to remember, though, it's the first year. The United States Football League started off fast. They said the second year they they got even better, and all of a sudden they made some movements management-wise, and they got a little greedy, and they forgot they were in the entertainment business, and they went down to tubes. The gentleman has got to be careful that he doesn't fall into that same trap. The most valuable player in tonight's Arena Bowl 87 is Gary Mullen, and you'll get to see him catch a Wood Taylor pass for a touchdown here. Number one out of West Virginia, and he's number one here tonight. The MVP from Hardy is Gary Mullen of Denver. Here's the pass to the near side, and making the grab rock Richmond. Well, this will be the longest two minutes and 34 seconds that Joe Herring has had in his whole life to watch his dream go come. I think he has a chance to win a championship, and all of a sudden it gets bombed. The fact, too, Lee, that Pittsburgh was 4-0. They lost their last three games. You know what? There's an interesting statistic on that. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh has not won a ball game. And there, Pittsburgh has not won a ball game since they clinched the title. There's Steve Trimble, the Iron Man. USA wet Iron Man for this game. Trimble had three interceptions. He returned one for a touchdown. Throws incomplete at the center. Powell is there. Mike Powell. Weaver State incomplete and triple there to defend. Minute 40. Well, that continues to run until the one minute warning. Yo, making the ball, man. Coming up immediately following our telecast here from Pittsburgh. Tim Brando and Gail Gardner standing by to bring you up to date ESPN Sports Center. And we'll bring you up to date on that Tyson Tucker heavyweight battle in Las Vegas. Tim Markham won a national junior college championship in 1979. He spent 10 years as a high school coach in Texas. He was a linebacker coach in the USFL, most recently with San Antonio. Arena football has given us a lot to talk about this season. Here are some of the top 
statistics in arena football in 1987. Little known, first time ever on here's stage of television. Here's number five, the longest run broken tonight in the playoffs, but set by Mike Hole of the Chicago Bruisers. Number four. Only 29% of its field goal attempts. The worst rushing team was Pittsburgh. The only just under nine yards a game. The wild game in Denver where the Dynamite beat Washington 73-57. And the number one statistic, 7,800 cups of USA West. Here's a pass to the end zone. And it's a touchdown. Rock Richmond, a juggling act, but he made the catch with 32 seconds remaining in the game. Brandon Fulmar with the touchdown pass. And Richmond making the grab to make it a 45 to 14 game. It's a 14 yard touchdown play. And Rock Richmond gonna take that game ball home with him. Pittsburgh going for two. Omar throws and it's complete. Short two-point pass conversion for Russell Harrison. 32 seconds left in the game. It is Denver 45. Pittsburgh 16 will return in just a moment. Live, the Friday night car fights. Son Rocky has Dad in a hot date on twist. Daughter Missy has Dad in a paper alley knee drop. And Mom's got the shopping center leg lock. Dad tells the ref he's ready to step back. A step back from the cost of a new car is a step up to a dependable used car at Royal Oldsmobile. So step up, you step up, used car, Royal Oldsmobile. Coming this fall to ESPN. The best of the NFL. From preseason contests to eight Sunday night clashes and the season finale Pro Bowl, you'll see it all live on ESPN. From start to finish this year, pro football duels here on the exclusive cable home of the NFL, ESPN. Five sixteen, Denver leading Pittsburgh with 32 seconds left. The Gladiators going to try an onside kick here. Has to go 10 yards. Mullen picks it up, goes out of bounds at the 14. Well, the Denver Dynamite is 31 seconds away from enjoying this championship officially. Number 20, Kelly Kirschbaum. He looks like a man on a mission. <laughs> He's got his cups of USA wet. And in the finest tradition of Harry Carson and Jim Burt, <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye on Kelly Kirschbaum. 31 seconds left. 45 to 16, Denver. Into the ball game. For Denver, number two, John Forkay. And that will be the final play, I do believe. The clock winding down to 17, 16 seconds. Denver need not snap it again. This game is in the history books. The first Arena Bowl championship game goes to Tim Markham's Denver Dynamite. And <laughs> they got Markham with the USA West. <laughs> And Denver officially caps the victory. It's all over in Pittsburgh at the Civic Arena. And the Denver Dynamites winning over Pittsburgh. The final score, 45 to 16. We'll be back with the presentation of the championship trophy, the Hardiest Cup, when we return after this. Working hard can really take it out. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment.
you made hamburger patties the way most places make hamburger patties, you discover your thick, meaty burgers were suddenly dry, flat, and lifeless. So at Hardee's, we developed a way to make our quarter pound patties gently, to cook up thicker, full of natural juices. It's a complicated machine, but we can give you an idea of the principle we based it on. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Plymouth Voyager gives America a powerful new reason why the pride is back. Front wheel drive, V6 power, fuel injected power. Power to climb, to pass, to carry, to move you. And quality backed by a new seven year or 70,000 mile protection plan. Plymouth Voyager V6. The pride is back, born in America. Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Denver Dynamite winning Arena Bowl 87, 45 to 16 over the Pittsburgh Gladiators. Right now, let's go down to the field and my partner Lee Corso for the awards presentation. Well, I feel like Brent Musburger down here. It's a great action. Hey, congratulations, uh, Jim. I know that uh, you're very, very happy as the founder of this league, and uh, you take over the ceremonies now. Okay, it's been quite a season, and we'd like to present a couple awards to some great athletes. First off, on behalf of USA Wet and Dwayne Huey, the president. We have the uh, Iron Man Award for the season presented to Bill Stone, running back and, and linebacker out of the uh, Chicago Bruisers. Bill, congratulations. Congratulations. Good. Okay. We got Russell Harrison anywhere. I guess he went in. Okay. Russell Harrison. This is Bill Lanks. Gary Langstaff, Executive Vice President of Hardee's. Gary has first the award to present to Russell Harrison. I think went to the locker room. MVP of the year award to Russell Harrison. A very, very fine season. Okay, we can understand that. Next. And now we can bring the coach to the Denver Dynamite. And Gary has a presentation along with me. This is the Hardee's Cup presented by Gary Langstaff. Looks like it got dropped. Everything happens wrong the first two or times, doesn't it? But it is the Hardy's Cup presented to the head coach down at the Denver Dynamite. We have all the cards. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. On behalf of all these guys back here, thank everybody. We appreciate it. Congratulations, Jim. Jim, everybody else. Now back up to Bob. The first arena. See you next year in Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> okay, okay, Lee. Final score, Denver 45 and Pittsburgh 16. ESPN's coverage of the Arena Football Championship game from the Civic Arena here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's been brought to you by Hardy. We're out to win you over. By USA Wet, the sports drink with less sodium and more potassium. It's hard-working refreshment. By, by Wilson Sporting Goods Company. Where there's a will, there's Wilson. And by Bud Light. The light beer with the first name and taste. Everything else is just a light. Gary Mullen catches three touchdown passes. He's the MVP as Denver defeats Pittsburgh 45 to 16. They win the championship on the road in Arena Bowl 87. Our thanks go to league president, founder Jim Foster, and all our crew from ESPN as we bring you the championship here tonight from the Civic Arena and for Lee Corso. This is Bob Rathman from Pittsburgh saying so long, everybody. Thank you.